Coming up on Mountain News this morning, one year after a London police officer was killed in the line of duty, the community he served is working to honor and remember him. And welcome back to 1862. We will go back in time to the Battle of Leatherwood as we talk to reenactors about why the military history of the area is so important. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Olivia Calfi. The time is 6 o'clock on October 30th. Now let's check in with Chief Forecaster Brandon Robinson for a look at your forecast this morning. And Brandon, it is going to be a Monday, a rainy Monday at that. It's going to be a Monday. You got that part <laughs> right exactly, but it is going to cool down quite a bit as we head through this Monday. So just be ready for that as we approach Halloween. I believe this has been our either third or fourth uh, chilly Halloween we've seen so far. So uh, let's hopefully we can break that trend here pretty soon. Let's take a look. Live pinpoint Doppler radar. A lot of green showing up there. Maybe some coming down in uh, Lee and Owsley counties this morning and then back up toward I-64 and just north. So we're keeping an eye on that downtown hazard from Triangle Park. Not looking too bad this morning. Low 60s out there. But again, wherever you were at midnight, that was your daytime high. We're at 51 now, Lexington, 52 in Moorhead, 55 in Irvine. Come a little closer back toward us, 63 still. Jackson, Harlan, 66, Pikeville. But those temperatures are going to fall. That was your daytime high roughly at midnight. And watch what happens here. Rain chances go up. Temperatures go down. It's going to be a dreary day as we get ready to uh, bring the spooky season in as we head into your Tuesday. I'll have the rest of that forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Olivia. Brandon, thank you. One year ago today, London police officer Logan Medlock died in the line of duty. Medlock died after he was hit by a reportedly drunk driver at the intersection of South Main Street and Highway 229. Casey Bird was charged with murder in the case. Medlock was 26 years old. On Friday, officers with the department joined members of Medlock's family at a memorial near the A.R. Dyke Cemetery. A memorial marker was placed near the scene where Medlock died. In a Facebook post on the London Police Department's Facebook page, Randy Medlock, Lo Logan's father, said, quote, This is a beautiful memorial of a life that was taken far too soon. This memorial is not just for our family, it is for the community as well. We lost a member of our family. The community lost a true servant of the people, end quote. Brooks Houck, the man being charged for murder of his former girlfriend, Crystal Rogers, was denied a judge removal. Houck's lawyers asked the Kentucky Supreme Court to take Judge Charles Sims off the case. The lawyers say Judge Sims showed bias in the case years before Houck was criminally charged for Rogers' murder. The Supreme Court remanded the motion, meaning it is getting sent back down to a lower court for consideration. Houck's attorneys will have to submit a new motion for the judge to recuse himself. Kentucky State Police Post 11 is conducting an investigation after an officer involved shooting. Troopers say that the Somerset Police Department responded to a domestic violence complaint in Pulaski County on Friday. Once Somerset Police arrived, they encountered a man with a gun. Troopers say that during the confrontation, the man was shot and declared dead on the scene by the Pulaski County Coroner. The officer that was shot was taken to a nearby hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The Wolf County search and rescue team responded to a call at Red River Gorge on Saturday. The woman had a lower leg injury after falling from the zoo crag. After arriving at the scene, they determined that her injury was non-ambulatory. The rescue team decided to carry her out in a Stokes basket due to the multiple vertical sections on the trail. Once they got her to the beginning of the trail, she was then taken care of by Cross EMS and transported to a nearby hospital to further assess her injury. 
Organizations across the region are participating in National Drug Take Back Day and some are promoting finishing medications as well. Hometown Pharmacy and Hazard has a drug take back box that allows folks to properly dispose of drugs. Pharmacist Tyler Weld says if you are prescribed a drug, it may be best to finish it off before getting rid of it, even beyond antiviral medications. SSRIs, so kind of like your um, mood stabilizers, those type of things, can really see uh, some negative effects, start to see some side effects when we miss doses of those, especially if we prolong missing doses. Tyler Wells also says if you are finished with the medication, scratching out personal information on the medicine bottle can keep you protected. George Pine Wesley Williams of Harlan County died on Tuesday. Williams was a veteran of the United States Air Force. He also worked as a coal miner, truck driver, and a patient transportation driver for CAA. Williams was the deputy fire chief of the Sunshine Fire Department and a member of the Harlan and Loyal Fire Departments. George Williams was 81 years old. Dozens of community members in Leatherwood gathered for a reenactment of a historic battle that took place more than 160 years ago. WYMT's Jack Dimmler was at the battlefield to talk about the importance of the reenactment. A shot that packs history from 161 years ago from a battlefield in the mountains. It's a lot of history in the area and we're just trying to actually preserve it. Dozens of community members gathered in Leatherwood for the 21st reenactment of the Battle of Leatherwood. You know, we have really, really good, not only community support, but area support. We have support from all four different counties that surround Prairie County. A reenactment that draws in people from various states. Well, the thing about it is, here's you got to draw. One, Kentucky, and two is uh, the awesome people of Leatherwood. People that have grown closer than just an organization. And Leatherwood is turned into my family one week in a year. All coming together to help teach people of all generations. I believe that the little things we do impact the future of the kids that are coming and the grown-ups too. And preserve history. About us preserving the history and trying to teach some of the youngsters in the area, you know, that we need to remember our history and preserve it because, like I said, if you, if you forget it, you know, it's doomed to repeat itself. It really is. Sharing pieces of history from the mountains. In Cornettsville, Jack Demler, WYMT Mountain News. The Leatherwood Reenactment Corporation also hosted Education Day for students over the weekend. Chairman of the board, Paul Talby, says this year there were roughly 400 kids during Education Day. Coming up on 608 here this morning, we are tracking some rain across parts of the region. You see the bulk of it still in central Kentucky. It's kind of riding along the front right now, but it will be moving into parts of our region a little bit later on. We're already seeing a little bit over toward uh, Lee and Owsley and Breathitt counties, a little heavier pockets of rain. Just be careful out there this morning. Downtown Hazard 61 there at Triangle Park as we look up the uh, street there toward the station and not a whole lot of action down that way. Whitesburg also seeing uh, some decent conditions out there this morning. Temperatures, we are in the 50s and falling out toward the west. 52 Moorhead, 55 Urban, 51 Lexington. That's where the front is located, so we're going to continue to watch that. Looking ahead, cool and dreary end to this month, October. It is going to be actually a cold and dreary end. Record lows possible to start November. That's tomorrow night and Wednesday night as well, and a warming trend by the weekend. I'll have more on all that coming up here in just a few minutes. Olivia. Thank you, Brandon, and thanks for joining Mountain News this morning. More news is on the way. Coming up, the community of Lewiston, Maine spent the weekend in mourning following the state's deadliest mass shooting. Now new reports may indicate that law enforcement had the shooter on their radar.